I think it's safe to say that everyone's in need of a little more liquidity, especially hedge funds. Now, this year has been brutal for anyone that's heavily invested in the blue chips or the tech stocks, and that's pretty much majority of the funds. Now, yes, there is a way to hedge that position, which is to go short on options, but that doesn't actually help them gain more money. That just helps mitigate some of the losses. Now, ultimately, the goal is by end of year to gain back a lot of those red positions or to try and turn it around and report green to their investors. And that's going to be a very difficult thing to do. The only way I see that is for them to actually go long in the small caps and the penny stocks in the OTC market. So we say small caps are back, but actually they haven't gone anywhere. And I believe retail and smart money's focus is going to shift away from the blue chips and the tech sector and move to these beat down, battered, small cap stocks with low floats, high short interest, a crazy amount of naked shorting on them. And the goal is to run them up. Now we have seen the algorithms go to work. It's proven time after time that there are four or five different stocks, completely different sectors, totally unrelated, and they trade the same. Now, when we look at a stock like CRTD, we see a massive run in the past few weeks. However, people get a little misconstrued with their perspective on the stocks. Most of these stocks were $9, $10. It's not a $0.04 cent stock. A lot of people, all they do is just look right here and say, oh, well, the stock's you know, $0.04, cents, right? And now it's up you know, 3,000%. Yes, that is true. However, if you just zoom out a little, the stock was $9 and it lost 99.9% .9 of its value. You look at finger motion, for example, well, we see the same thing. Everyone keeps saying, oh, well, the stock was, you know, 50 cents and went up 1600 percent. Yes, but the stock was also $17 and IPO at around nine. So you have to have a little bit of perspective of where these stocks came. Now, comparing the charts, what we see is really at the end of September, uh, they ran all the way up. They ran hard, you know, like we just saw 1600%. And then the same dates, it's October 13th, 14th, and 17th, the stocks got hit down and then recovered. We see the same thing with GTII, right? At the end, you know, we see it go up. Let's see, 12, 1300%. And what do we notice? Right at the end of September, it runs. And then we see the 13th, the 14th, and the 17th. You know, these three days, it gets hit down here. So how is that possible? Because it's a computer. It's an algorithm running it. Look at MMTLP, right? We see the same exact thing. It runs right at the end of September. And then what do we see? 13th, 14th, 17th, and a huge run. And if we look at the gains here, right? Up four or 500%. Where are you going to find a blue chip or a tech stock that's able to run four or 500% in two, three weeks, two, 3000% in a month? It's impossible. You can't name one stock. Okay. So that's really the big thing that I'm trying to explain to you guys is smart money is wising up. They're getting even more smart and they're realizing that retail has more buying power, more bang for their buck by buying a stock that's five or 10 cents, as opposed to maybe 50 or a hundred dollars. You can't buy as much Tesla as you can MMTLP or a stock like GTI or finger motion, right? It's just not possible. So this is where the action is. This is where the funds are going to make back all their losses. This is where they're going to do is they're going to run it up two, three, four thousand percent, drop 10, 20 million on a stock, which is nothing. It's peanuts. And they're going to try a 10 exit and make two, 300 million off it and run away happy. Okay. Double that up two, three times. And you gained a lot lot of those losses back. And that's where I think the computers are running it up, cycling it back down, and it's ready for round two. Okay. I don't know if there's a psychological aspect to it with the midterms coming or where there has to be this, uh, this election phase of the stocks are going to run. We're going to have this bear market rally. I don't know what it is. Um, I can't tell you that deep. But what I'm seeing is a lot of stocks trading in sync, the same dates they run up, the same dates they come down, and they're all highly shorted, massive amount of naked shorts involved, um, and they're getting squeezed out. And I think that the funds are starting to you know, take advantage of that because they realize, hey, I can't run Apple up 2,000%. There's no way in 20 trading days I could take any one of my major holdings up 2,000%. It's not possible, but you can do that in OTC. You certainly can. So looking at CRTD, We've had a massive run, right? I think the next step that's going to happen for stocks like this is to go on an exchange that doesn't allow shorting, right? How do we squeeze them out? How do we you know, change gears and break these short sellers? Well, I think it's having a way to force stock settlement. And that way is to go on an exchange that doesn't allow shorting, that doesn't allow the lending of its user securities and doesn't allow market makers.
created announced application for dual listing on blockchain powered securities exchange upstream we know it's offshore right like we mentioned no shorting no lending of the securities no market makers this is really important but it's the other thing that's awesome is their og collection or their spin-off of its physical media library and web3 assets so that's really important um is that they have seven to ten million dollar valuation of photographs digital artwork collection and other things that i i'm not really too familiar about but they've done over 100 auctions. Um, and this is incredible because if we look, we've seen other companies that have had a ton of success uh, going through upstream. Looking at ticker symbol PIXY, we saw a low here of around $11 in pre market, $11.71, and it blew up to $45 in one day. They did a reverse split here through upstream, and then we saw they've had great success here. I don't know much about the company. I don't know, you know, the short interest on it. I'm not well versed in it at all, but uh, if anyone else is, please drop a comment. I'd love to know. But Pixie, for example, went through upstream. You know, they didn't have any shorting allowed on it. The stock went parabolic. So uh, when we look at CRTD, the stock's already up 2,000%. Okay, I think that's just retail buying. You know, we saw 5.2 million. That's pretty unusual compared to the last one. We saw 5.27, which was uh, back in the beginning of September. So it's been about two months since it's seen this high of volume. Um, it's very oversold on the daily. Um, but what we know is that, you know, even though a position's overbought, it can continue to be overbought uh, even more. That shifts a lot, um, but who knows what's going to happen with these stocks? I think GTII, especially, you know, they're trying to put the stock in slow motion, right? Uh, they're trying to suck all the volume and volatility out. They did that in CRTD, and then boom, all of a sudden it snapped and went to the moon. So the same thing here. Look at this: eight million, eight point five, eight point seven million, and now what? Eight hundred thousand. It was over ten x the volume, not but two, three weeks ago. So this is extremely insignificant, right? It's not something I'm going to sit there and say, oh my God, the stock's selling off. Look at this, 200,000 daily volume on finger motion. And we saw not only, but three, four weeks ago, 31 million and then 73 million shares traded in one day, 73 million compared to 230,000 today. Child, please, come on. This is nothing to worry about. All these stocks are ready to run, ready to go round two. And what you're going to see is that, in my opinion, uh, when I don't know, I don't know if it's going to consolidate a little. I don't know if it's going to come down a little and then do this. I, I can't give you the exact outline. I don't have you know a crystal ball. But all these stocks are primed. They're ready to go. I think the smart money is buying the dip. They realize retail's putting all their money in here. Let's kill the shorts because it doesn't matter. They have no ties to it. Run it up four, five, 10 points, whatever it might be. They don't need a lot of liquidity. They don't have to go and buy a stock that's $100. They could buy a stock that's two, three, four dollars and run it up 20 points and make a living and a killing on the way up and then on the way down. That is what smart money is doing, in my opinion. That's where I think the sentiment is shifting. And then ultimately, um, I don't know if it's midterms, I don't know what it is, but I think we're going to see a complete all across the small caps, all across these low float OTC market. It's going to be a massive squeeze. Um, and we're going to see a lot of tickers just go parabolic. They're going to wake up from the dead. So that's my two cents on it. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Any comments, questions, concerns, leave them in the section below. And if you haven't, check out my previous space call that I uploaded is about an hour and a half. Talks all about market structure, uh, naked shorting, predatory lending, OTC, everything you need to know. The links will be in the description. Appreciate you guys' support so much. I love you guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.